What is up, everybody? It's me, your boy, Sean Grapevine, co-branch manager of the Atlanta, Georgia branch of U Mortgage. And before I introduce my esteemed colleague here, I would just like to take a moment of thankfulness to thank the one and only C Wizard, that's Caden Willard to some of y'all, uh, for setting up these calls every single week at the exact same time, listening us to uh, listening to us uh, babble on and and try and uh, uh, like prepare for this about four minutes before it starts. And uh, I just want to thank Caden, guys. Uh, he does all of the video production for, for all of you mortgage. And uh, if you see a video, it's probably got his uh, his fingerprints on it. And uh, we can't thank him enough. Caden, are you there? Can you pop in? Can we give you a round of applause? Maybe he can't pop in. I don't know how computers work. Uh, oh, you. there he is. I appreciate it. You guys are the best. Yeah, man. Keep it Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, man. We really appreciate it. Hey, did you, did you change the uh, the intro music this week? I did. We have a new countdown. Made a little wow, you know, wow. Match our funky background. I mean, just the, the smallest little things that go <laughs> go so far. So we appreciate you, Caden. Thanks for all you Thanks, do, man. Guys. Thanks, yeah, guys. Cheers. And not to take away any of his flair this man when the yield curve is inverted he's completely upright he once found 37 bips on the sidewalk in the maldives and a overnight couriered them to me from his vacation to save a deal he's the sultan of secondary he's the mac of the rate stack he's the taste tester of each investor he's the baron of bips the titan of the tenure he's the reason for the season the awesome austin koenig welcome austin Thanks, Sean. Uh, and thank you, Caden, for everything you do. I really do appreciate it. He's fun fact. Caden and I started on the same day. Uh, we've been at Umortis the exact same amount of time. Yeah. Oh man, we got some old uh, men. Old men at this at this uh, establishment. Wizened, old, just yeah, gray haired. You guys have been here for what? To work with him, but yeah. Um, you guys have been here for what? Almost two whole years. Yeah, a year and four months. That is year that is uh, you know? yeah Coming man, up you got half, you yeah. guys I, yeah you're nearing retirement age um well uh welcome Austin uh not not a ton in uh in the news last week uh I think uh as far as like official numbers and and stuff like that but we did have two things we had a bunch of uh Fed employees uh <laughs> talking to journalists um and then we also had the uh, the PPI um so tell us about both of those. Yeah, I think generally uh, we're still kind of having the the CPI hangover, I guess you could say, uh, what was what happening last week. If we're looking at, you know, what the Fed is saying, uh, you, you kind of have to look at every speaker as a, a one person point uh, of the Fed. Like there's a multiple, mm -hmm. multiple Fed officials that make decisions. And um, at the end of the day, there has been a lot of unison lately in terms of how they want to hike. You know, they've all been on the same same page, 75 bips, 75 bips. But as we, uh, you know, and one of our uh, lenders, KP, he actually had a video out uh, this past weekend. And I think he did a great job explaining uh, this. And essentially, we're going to start to see the uh, divergence or fracturing of kind of a unison Fed with uh, us seeing data start to kind of trend in the direction of, hey, what you're doing is starting to work in terms of lowering inflation uh you know raising unemployment and and one thing that's kind of i guess uh you know a good point that you also brought up the fed has the luxury of having low unemployment right now so you know no one can kind of argue hey low unemployment we need to fix that uh, it's not very uh you know it, it's easy to have a longer leash when you have uh, a stronger labor market right uh mm -hmm. and at the end of the day the inflation part is what they can kind of wholeheartedly attack without much of a uh, differing opinion, essentially. Now, once we start to see inflation come down, possibly, and, you know, maybe initial jobless claims or continuing jobless claims continue to uh, increase or stay higher uh, or, you know, unemployment rate go up. That's where I think we start to see maybe some difference in opinion of how fast or how much longer should we raise these rates. And, uh, you know, is, there's is there, a couple is there any, speakers last week that definitely is is there any situation oh, where oh I think I think we're on a little delay here. Uh is, is there any situation in which uh unemployment rate doesn't go up measurably, but we still combat inflation? Or or is that like do we need need unemployment to go up? 
That's a great question. That's the uh, that's the soft landing, uh, you know, the magical soft landing that everyone wants to have, right? Is uh, unemployment rate doesn't go up too much, uh, and we have consistent growth. But at the end of the day, that's kind of unrealistic. Uh, it, we probably will have to have unemployment go up, and I mean, you kind of see layoffs in the headlines, you know, across mm-hmm. tech companies that need cheaper financing to kind of grow continually. And this is the simple economics equation here that they're working on. You know, when you make money more expensive, investments become less often and uh, they make less sense. And, you know, every tech company, like you want to do another project in uh, you know, the tech stack, build a whole new product, build a metaverse. Um, mm-hmm. That takes money. And when money becomes more expensive, you might change. You know what? We're not going to employ all those people. You know, I'm kind of using Meta as an example here, but that's exactly kind of what happens and that can drive unemployment rate up. And now that's obviously a vacuum kind of looking at it, but um, at the end of the day, that's essentially what the goal is there. Obviously you're trying to tame inflation too, and you want to get the the terminal rate high enough to where it can actually control inflation or bring it down below the terminal rate. And then that's when you can start thinking about shrinking, um, you know, the fed funds rate and kind of doing rate cuts or pivoting essentially. Uh, that's that's something that we're kind of stole a ways away from, in my opinion. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to see a rate hike in December, and December 14th is uh, when the Fed meets. Do we know what that rate hike is? Not necessarily, but I think uh, if most people could put money on it, uh, they would probably put 50 bips. Um, here's what we should also pay attention to next week. Uh, we have a couple different things that will come out and that are all very important, and all kind of what the Fed is positioning the market to say, hey, don't think uh, or don't overreact quite yet. We have some more data to come out and then we'll even think about that as even if we should react to that data. And that data is uh, the jobs number that comes out next Friday. And we also have PCE, okay. which is the Fed's preferred uh, inflation measure. So uh-huh. those PCP. two things come out Got next it. week. Lots of PCP. Um, uh-huh. That's some, yeah, PCP. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's the big things that'll come out next week. That will make a volatile market, um, especially if we see some surprises or, um, you know, disappointments. Either way, th- there's going to be some reaction to that in the market. Tell me this about uh, how uh, like rate, uh, you know, lowering the Fed funds rate. So so assuming that we hit like the the level of inflation or the path to inflation that we want, I mean, like the Fed's not going to lower the Fed funds rate in the face of good news in that perspective, right? Like uh, it's my understanding that they want to keep lowering the Fed funds rate as like a weapon against uh, like contraction that so they're only going to use it in the case of, of bad news going towards uh appropriate levels of inflation like that that's not going to cause a lowering of the fed funds rate in general right unless they're trying to kind of intercept a possible contraction that's exactly right and that's actually the trickiest part about the fed's job right is they they are trying to regulate pricing uh so basically inflation and then they're also trying to keep a stable unemployment rate so um you know with contract like you know any sort of recession you typically see you know growth basically decline uh, or negative GDP, essentially. But you also see, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, jobs become, uh, you know, harder to get and you'll see unemployment rate, uh, you know, go up essentially. And these and these sort of things happen in a, you know, a typical recession. The thing is, is where the Fed needs to start cutting the rates will be when they feel it's appropriate to keep, uh, you know, the economy from hurting too much, but also basically providing stimulation. But at the same time, they're going to have to uh, make sure inflation is down enough to where they're like, you know what, we actually have some room to cut. Uh, That's kind of where I think they're trying to tell the market, look, we're not going to cut rates until we see, you know, anything really bad in terms of, you know, unemployment. Um, And we also want to make sure inflation is fixed by then. So I, I think the putting water on the market's excitement about a low inflation number is kind of the right thing to do. But at the end of the day, uh, the market is, you know, smart and they know that the Fed is uh, they're, they're playing a lot of linguistic games, essentially, and making sure that their language, uh, <laughs> you know, doesn't kind of show their cards too early in terms of maybe a pivot. Um, and so at the end of the day, I think that's kind of where we're balancing is we need to make sure that we see economy that continues to be stable um, before the Fed 
you know, you know, the Fed's never going to cut rates until the, you know, I think we actually see some really ish, big issues in terms of economic growth and unemployment being a pretty big issue. Uh, they, they're fine with having a Fed funds rate that's uh, higher than, you know, inflation. And, and, you know, inflation comes down to 4%, 3%. You know, they're not going to cut rates, I think, just because the inflation number is there. Sure. I think well, that's, probably... that's that's dry powder for their for like fighting off future like crises and, and like serious contractions. Right. Exactly right. Exactly right. All right. So we've got we had uh, we had PPI come out uh, low last week, uh, which is great. Uh, market reacted well to that. It kind of uh, uh, buttressed the uh, uh, the CPI data. Uh, and then we had kind of conflicting um news from the fed basically like totally understand uh, i think that they, they saw the market as generally having an overreaction is my understanding to to like the the good cpi data the good ppi data and they were basically like whoa, whoa, whoa like don't don't get ahead of yourselves like i saw one of the the fed uh governors uh basically said like you know we, we could we could bring the fed funds rate to seven like we don't care <laughs> i was like jesus bro calm down um and uh you know and so we've got we've got jobs numbers next friday and then we've got uh cpi the 13th right and then the next day is uh the fed meeting something like that uh, yeah i think the 14th is the day that they release the rate hike decision and yeah mm -hmm. pce is also uh, i believe wednesday december 1st if i'm not mistaken wow all right uh, so a couple, busy a couple weeks to, to to wrap up the year um and you don't know where it's going I don't know where it's going, but somebody at this company is going to get lucky enough to think they know where it's going. We're announcing a, uh, a company-wide contest, uh, guessing, um, wagering, I mean, not really wagering, but uh, betting on uh, where various metrics and statistics are going to come in. So we'll post more about this later, but basically uh, at the beginning of next week, we're going to have the one and only Rob Peeklow on board and uh you two are going to go head to head on uh putting in your estimates of where cpi is going to come in uh like where, where inflation is going to be where the dow jones is going to be where the 10 years going to be uh and a couple other key metrics and uh the winner of that uh gets something great and the loser has to do something embarrassing uh tbd and then uh the whole rest of the company gets to play as well in those five different categories and the winner of each category is uh going to get some cool swag so we'll post more about that later i see it in the in the general uh workplace group and in the lo chat and uh so get your uh get your juice flowing guys start thinking about like you know get that crystal ball out see if you can uh, divine where the 10 year is going to be on december 30th everybody clearly knows it's going to be 3.673 if you don't think it's 3.673 i don't want to have anything to do with you honestly and uh Get your uh, get your your bets in for that. Once we announce it, we'll have a little form we put out, and uh, you're not going to want to miss this. The swag is worth it alone, but the bragging rights are even better. Austin, do you, what do you think your chances are uh, against Robbie? It's a great question. I, I think I think Rob Pros is a uh, you know worthy foe over here. Uh, I'm not in the prediction of you know guessing where everything is at all times. You know, if I knew all the answers, I wouldn't be working here because I just make tons and tons of money just betting on the market because I know everything. Um, you know, and at the same time, I think if everyone had all the answers, I think that we'd all be in that boat too. So <laughs> at the end of the day, um, I, I'm not the best predictor of the whole time. So I think in general, it's going to be a tough fight. Um, I think we have some good, interesting questions that everyone can get involved with. And it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be really cool to see where uh, everything shakes out. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, Rob uh, takes a big L uh, on his way home <laughs> to end the year. <laughs> there you go. That's the esprit de corps where uh, we've come to know and love here at U Mortgage. So thanks, everybody. Enjoy your Thanksgiving week. Be on the lookout for the uh, competition uh, announcements. And, um, you know, it'll be a fight for second place after after me right behind me but um you know it's definitely still worth you know runner up is good so have a great week uh put any questions you have in the comments and we'll see you next monday bye everybody happy thanksgiving <laughs>